Yeah, Zach, you want to start uh, just by showing the photograph that I sent you of the uh, right outside the federal building, the the site of all of this that is happening. Um, someone flying a flag, and there were a few of these. Someone flying an American flag upside down, um, such that it was easy to capture the you know federal building, some of the graffiti on it, and the the fence that's been erected around it. And uh, you know, this is this is a, a clear, frankly, fuck America symbol well throw, uh, flying the flag upside down i think it's one step more clever than that mm -hmm. that is a um an artifact designed for a verificationist viewpoint if you hate america you can find it in the flying of that flag upside down if you love america and you think it needs to do better if you think things are screwed up you can also find it in that upside down flag and so i think i suppose it's actually clever. it looks it looks i mean i I feel like I'm a patriot who feels like America can do better for mm -hmm. sure. And uh, and uh, that has, of course, always been true and is probably always true for any complex uh, political system. But clearly we could be doing, we could be doing better and could have been doing better. And yet it never would have occurred to me to uh, display or try to communicate any kind of actual patriotism by flying a flag upside down. Well, let me put it to you this way. If you burn a flag, it's pretty unambiguous what you mean. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you fly a flag upside down, I truly believe that the even just the part of the mind that understands that to be a patriotic symbol gets conflicting messages, and you will be allowed to read into it whatever it is that you want to read into it, which is part of the problem here, is yeah. that almost everybody who is making excuses for what's going on in Portland and elsewhere is seeing what they want to see, right? right? They've had a verificationist message put in front of them. Yeah. They've had ambiguity placed where they can do their own some assembly required version of events in which, you know, this is peaceful protest. It's an honorable uh, tradition in America. It is what the First Amendment is about, mm -hmm. right? Except for the fact that there's a reliable pattern in which the peaceful protest descends into violence each and every night against a federal building. So um, <clears throat> anyway, verificationism is, is, is the, uh, the core here. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Uh, Zach, if you want to show maybe just 10 seconds or so of the, of the video that's darker that I, that I sent you, in which they're chanting. Uh, hopefully, we couldn't hear that, but hopefully there was enough being shown there that you could hear the chants, which is this sort of atonal, nasal, all cops are bastards, A-C-A-B. All cops are bastards, A-C-A-B. This is not during the part of the evening that things began to unravel. Actually, this is during what is you know would be widely considered the peaceful protest, and yet that is the chant. That is, that is the chant. It is clearly divisive. And hateful and dehumanizing and has no chance of reaching across borders between demographics. And then finally, um, the other video, Zach, that I sent you, uh, which is a laser, there's, there's no reason I can talk over the sound on this because I'll just describe for those people who are still not watching. There's a, a laser show of a, uh, on the federal building, maybe show it again, Zach, of, uh, of a pig wearing a police hat with X'd out eyes that then uh, becomes fuck that, that's what it says. This is being projected from the roof of a car at ground level onto the building. There's, there are several projections onto the building. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's, there's no way to unite, to imagine that the people that, that are inside that building defending it could come to be your friends or allies when this is the messaging that's out there. Yeah, it is designed to be an unbridgeable gap. It is designed to make this manifestation of our collective self, the federal government, into the enemy, yeah. which is, of course, preposterous. And the reason that this is desired and plausible has to do with Trump, lightning rod, mm -hmm. who couldn't possibly take an action that would be read as the right one. If you name an action and you say that's what he should have done and then he does it, it will instantly become uh, overreach in the minds of those uh, drawing this verificationist um, portrayal. Um, 
Did you want to go on to that? Or? It's up to you. I just thought you might be going there. Uh, we'll go there in a second. Okay. Um, actually, maybe we should go there first, the Wall of Moms. Okay. So uh, let me say mm-hmm. I encountered the Wall of Moms for the first time as I was riding my bike through downtown to get home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I passed by the protests and just wanted to see what it was about. And the Wall of Moms was there. I think it might have been their second night in this existence. Would have been a week ago today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I must say that in looking at the Wall of Moms, my conclusion was much what we had heard from the couple of people we knew who had seen it in the previous iteration, which was that there were people in the crowd who looked like they might be moms, but that the majority of these people looked like they weren't likely to be moms and they were just donning yellow shirts. And of Mm -hmm. course, if you think about this from the perspective of a protest that's trying to make a visual point, why would this be restricted to moms when the idea is that these are are people who identify as moms for the purpose of uh, making the uh, response by the federal government look on American. Right. And when we were down there three nights ago, uh, we saw the the sort of embankment of moms before they became the wall of moms, before they marched in front of the federal courthouse uh, and and did the performative part of what they do, which, you know, I don't think anyone's denying that, right? right. That, that it's it's clearly performative. But uh, what is being called into question, what we're calling into question, and what, you know, Donald Trump called into question, and a lot of other people, um, is... Is it organic? Are are these moms who felt, you know, the 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 cry from the heart of of these other mothers who've had their children slaughtered by racial violence at the hands of police um, out there on the streets to decry that? I suspect that there are are some people out there who really did feel that and are out there, but. Um, I think it nearly impossible that it explains everyone, and I think it quite possible, and at least a hypothesis we need to be considering, that this isn't organic, that it didn't start that way at all. And to that point, um, I would suggest, just just like we spent some time looking at the official Black Lives Matter site, here's there's an official all the Wall of Moms site. Uh, so Zach, if you can show this, um, it it you know begins with the hashtag Black Lives Matter, which is at least in keeping. That's on message, right? And it says you know, it says what we're going to do, but um, check out the bullet points. It's not as egregious as the Black Lives Matter website, but it's all the same language that we've been learning from Robin D'Angelo and Ibram Kendi and all of this critical theory and critical race theory stuff. We listen to black leaders. We are here to follow their direction behind the scenes and at the Justice Center. We go where they tell us. That's allyship in 2020, which is not, of course, allyship. It is a form of... Uh, Subjugation, yeah. yeah. Our goal, it continues, is to push the media to turn the focus where it belongs, black leaders. Well, really? Because Walla Mom seems to be taking a lot of the, the press at the moment. We will use our white bodies, not our white voices. Again, with this uh, dehumanization focus on bodies stuff. Um, Bev, who was the founder of Olive's Moms, vision was that we moms would take some physical hits in hopes that our black and brown kids, friends, neighbors, and loved ones will be spared some pain. To summon that mom warrior spirit to protect our kids, all our kids, let the feds, feds and cops hit gas shoot us first, not to be the voice of the movement. This is, this is picking up on not just a trope, but a reality that actual mothers have. Right, that you know, mother, human mothers, bear mothers, all mothers who have an actual relationship with their children, which is that they will actually put themselves in harm's way to protect their children, and under certain circumstances, um, that can be that mater- that deep abiding, like deeper than anything else, maternal instinct, if you will. Instinct probably isn't the right word here, but can be placed onto other other targets, but. Um, this feels very much like a ploy. And uh, in the last live stream, I mentioned Nassim Taleb's coining of the term pedophrasty, I think it was, in which he, he said, this is what happens when you use children to front an ideology and it, and it, it plucks at the heartstrings of people because you can't turn your, your head or away or your heart or your emotions away from, from a child and a child's um, you know, yearning to be heard and to have justice done. And so I suggested that actually matra Frasty is also a thing that that is what is going on here. That it's really hard when people are when people are making the claim that this is a this is an, this is 
a lot of moms in Portland who were seeing the pain of black and brown bodies, really, not people, bodies, okay, black and brown bodies, and going out there and putting themselves in harm's way, you know, presumably at risk of, if, if we are to believe the hyperbole, frankly, at risk of orphaning their own children because they feel this strongly, I'm kind of not buying it. Yeah. I'm just not buying it. 